Hey, how's it going everyone? Today I have another Nintendo GameCube with a disc read error. So this one is a pretty common issue with these older Nintendo GameCubes. They tend to kind of over time not be able to read discs, but it's really not that hard of a fix. We're gonna go ahead and replace these capacitors and show you that most of the time is just replacing the capacitors that will fix this type of issue and give you a permanent fix. Now there are different types of uh, ways to resolve this that adjust, adjust the potentiometer on the disc reader and that's fine I mean, it, it'll get you by especially if you don't have all the tools and equipment um, It's not a true fix, but nonetheless, we're gonna go ahead and Replace the capacitors on this GameCube and see if we can get it working But before we do that, let's go ahead and test it out and see exactly what we see here on the screen So the GameCube is firing up now you can see that it's just going to this menu and if you go up you see that there's no discs with all that being said let's go ahead and open this up and get started on the repair so obviously the first thing you're going to do is disconnect the power cord make sure that everything is disconnected from the system before we go ahead and disassemble it make sure that your disc is out as well so this one i'm just gonna go put in the side so once the system is ready we're gonna flip it on its back and we're gonna see these four screw holes that are located under the system and we're simply gonna remove these screws now in order to do this, you'll need a security bit. Um, now this one came with an iFixit and this is just an extension because these are pretty deep in there, but it allows me to easily remove these screws without any problems. Once all four screws are removed, just make sure to hold the top, flip it over, and then just remove the casing. Now, in order to get to the board, there are a couple of screws that are located all around the system that you must remove first in order to get access to it. We'll start with the front. So here you simply unclip these two things on the side just pull it forward gently. It is being held by a ribbon cable, so you don't want to pull too hard. And there are four screws that are located in here. Now the lighting is not that great, but let me zoom in. And you can see here these four screws that are located up front. Next, you'll want to remove these two screws that are located here next to the fan. Once those are removed, you can simply kind of gently move this up and into the side. So one thing I did forget to mention was to remove this uh, back plating in the back, because uh, it makes it easier to remove this fan. So let's just simply move this out of the way. All right, so there are a couple of screws that are remaining and they're located all around this metal housing right here. So it's all along the edge. So you can see here that there's one screw there. If we turn the system around, there is two screws that are located here and these last two screws that are located here. Now on my system, I have a suspicion that they might have opened it. I don't remember if there's more screws. I sometimes think there is. Um, nonetheless, if there are, just make sure to remove them and this should expose and remove all the disc tray here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward just to make sure that uh, we kind of get along since it's a bit lengthy process to kind of You know replace all the capacitors. So once all the screws have been removed You can simply just lift this up and this should all come out at the same time Now there are gonna be a couple of screws that you're gonna have to remove here in order to get access to the board and I believe uh, They might be the last ones So I'm gonna move this GameCube to the side so that way I can just focus on working on the board here Let's go ahead and start removing all these screws so that we can get access to the board. All right, so I did forget that there are these additional screws that are located down here, but I do promise that once you remove all these cables, um, then you should have access to the other side where the capacitors are located. But we're gonna have to remove these four and then also remove these cables. The only ones that are gonna be soldered on here are these two. These are, um, it really depends on you if these are an inconvenience and you can just desolder them and then put them back on later that way you have uh, complete access to the to the board and it's not really moving around too much and that's actually what i'm going to go ahead and do on my end uh, that way it's a little easier to work with so let's get started by removing these four screws real quick and then i'll go ahead and remove these uh cables that are also on this board okay the four screws are removed we're gonna remove this cable here just be careful with it don't be uh, too hard with it Comes off pretty easy now this ribbon cable you're gonna push off going that way uh, that way. Sorry um, So you're gonna pull on this like this before you can actually pull the cable out and The last one here. This one is a little bit trickier uh, There are different ways that I like to do this one and I'll go ahead and show you the way I like to do it normally I um, I'll get me my spudger real quick and I try to get under the board here and gently kind of move it evenly and just be careful don't be uh, too rough with it see I just kind of pushed it off of this 
Now, the easy way that I like to take it off is that once it's off this little piece of plastic here, then I just simply flip the board down this way and then I pull the cable out like this. That way it's a lot easier and it comes out really clean. Like I said, the next step that I'm going to do is just simply remove these. So let me go ahead and fire up my um, or turn on my, my soldering station. That way I can just desolder these two pieces real quick. Now that we have the board freed up, you want to flip it around. You'll see all the capacitors that we're going to replace. Now I'm going to remove all these with a hot air station. Um, the only problem that I see when I'm putting things back on is going to be located down here. All the other ones are very straightforward and easy to just put back on. The only problem with this one down here is that these are a little crowded, at least when you're getting your soldering iron in between here when you're trying to get uh either this joint here or this joint here now the reason why you have to be careful is because you obviously don't want to be uh touching your soldering tip against any of these capacitors because you might mess them up so that's the only thing that i will mention that you have to be careful with now i will be replacing these capacitors um, i got them from a different vendor but most of the time i just buy them from console5.com and um, they give you the entire set that's required to replace these um, capacitors and I'll go ahead and make sure to put a link below on the description that way in case you are trying to do this type of replacement then we can go ahead and simply uh, uh, give you that link so that you can do it yourself all right so let's go ahead and get started let's start up this uh, hot air station and start removing these capacitors Thank you. 
So I did forget to mention before we get started is that there are there is polarity on these capacitors. So you have to be careful and ensure that you're you're installing them in the right direction. So um, in case you're wondering, I mean, for the most part, just follow along with whatever I'm doing if you're unsure. Um, and also make sure that the voltage and the microfarads on the capacitors are, were matching the ones that were there before. Um, I can go ahead and also put maybe like a link URL to show exactly kind of what the setup is. But um, yeah, just be mindful of that. So that way you don't mess up your, your board. All right, so let's go ahead and continue and let's wrap this up.
All right, so now all the capacitors are on. So let's go ahead and test it out and see if everything is working. But before we do that, we also want to make sure that we put this cable back on. So it's pretty easy to tell because uh, it'll tell you here which wire goes where. So you see brown and red. And we really just want to solder those back on in case you desoldered them and then put everything back together and we'll go ahead and test it out. Okay, so here we go. We're going to put this cable back in. Go ahead and put this blue wire back. And the last thing we put is this ribbon cable. Just make sure to secure it once it's in. So pull down on these sides here on this brown lock and we should be good on this side. Now I'm not going to screw it in just yet because I want to go ahead and test it out and make sure that everything is good. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that first really quick and make sure that everything is working. All right, so we have the bottom of the board. I'm gonna go ahead and get the metal plating and just orient it into where it's supposed to be. So here's this cutout, um, make sure that it's flushed. And then of course, you're just gonna simply attach it. So you can see here, this adapter connection here goes into that slot. We'll go ahead and attach it. So now that we have this in place, we just wanna connect it loosely. So we have the AV cables that we're gonna connect in the back and we're gonna plug in the power cord. And this one's going to go over here on this fan. So it's located back here. Simply put it there. I'm just going to kind of loosely put everything back together so we can go ahead and test it. And let's not forget our disc. So I'm going to just put Metroid. And in order to test this, whenever you're powering it without the shell, you want to make sure that you hold these two um, kind of facing that way. So you just kind of lightly push them back. Uh, don't go too hard because you can break these. So let's power it on and see if we get anything on the screen. And so far it's spinning, so that's good news. And yes. All right, guys. So it looks like we were able to fix this one. Uh, the disc is still acting a little funky. I'm not sure if I've ever heard that before. Let's plug in a remote and see what happens. Yeah, it's still going. All right. So that's definitely what we want to see. So looks like everything's working fine. But just because it's working here doesn't mean that I'm good with it. Normally, just to kind of let you all know, I normally leave a game running for about an hour, making sure that everything's working before I go ahead and make sure and call this fixed. But I'm not going to have you guys here for an hour. So let me go ahead and power this off. But in the meantime, everything seems to be working. Luckily, we were able to fix this Nintendo GameCube, and as you all saw, it's pretty simple to fix, but unfortunately, if you don't have the right tools, meaning the hot air station and a good soldering iron, um, it might be a little bit more difficult, but nonetheless, the fix itself is actually pretty simple. Although I did catch myself after the fact that I was um, didn't really apply the new capacitors on correctly, and that was mainly because of the way that um, when I applied the fresh solder to the, to the existing pads, it created kind of like this little bubble. And so when I was setting the caps, they were kind of uneven. And now thinking about it, I should have probably wicked away all that fresh solder and then just kind of had those clean pads ready to go and then applied some fresh solder with the capacitors on there. Um, so long story short, I messed up. It's been a, it's been a while since I've actually fixed any system. I promise to. Uh, be a little bit more active. I do have a couple of PSPs lined up, but I'm just waiting for some screens to come in and before I go ahead and fix that. And I'll definitely go ahead and show that once I get that all ready to go. But anyway, that wraps up today's video. If you like today's content, please be sure to hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe as I release more content. Thank you all for watching. I'll catch you all next time.